All right, so I finally bought a pressure washer. Let's see if I got a good deal or not. So let me tell you the story. This pressure washer is a uh, pressure washer that's typically sold at Tractor Supply Co. And I believe these are around $600 new. You can probably get them on sale for less. Like $599 is, I think, the list price. I found this one on Marketplace for $375. And the guy came down $25. He's a real nice guy. So I paid $350 for it. And here's the situation. He said that he bought this then found out that his stepson already had a pressure washer or something like that, so he didn't really need this one. And uh, he couldn't return it because he didn't have his receipt. And apparently he paid cash as well, so I don't know. I checked it as far as I could. It looked like all the parts were there. Um, so I went ahead and bought it for 350, so this could be a great deal or it could be a ripoff. you don't know. Let's open it up. There's one thing that I noticed immediately, which I did before I bought it. This gas tank is dented a little bit, so hopefully that's not a major issue. So let's see if we can get everything out of the box and start assembling it. It certainly looks like we have everything to make a complete pressure washer. Honda GX160. Add check oil. The engine is shipped without oil. Before starting the engine, add the oil provided. That's always a good idea to start an engine after you add the oil. So a couple of things of note already. Um, this is scratched up down here. That was out of the box at some point, most likely. And um, this knob here is um, kind of broken a little bit. Doesn't affect usage, but it's been Cracked. So far, no deal breakers. Um, let's keep uh, keep going and see what we find. If one thing wasn't obvious already, well, this thing is going to be great for short people. No, seriously, it'll work okay. I hope. I mean, at least it comes up to my knee. We have all five nozzles. That's good. Go ahead and throw these into the bracket here that holds them, or we'll dump them all over the ground. This manual's already got a greasy thumbprint on there, or fingerprint. I can't tell if it's a thumb or a finger, but it's a print. Now this is kind of weird. I'm not used to having oil in a bag. Okay, stop, take care of me, and take care of your investment. Always treat your fuel with up to $10 of mail-in rebate. Oh, ethanol fuel, yeah. Hosh, an engine shipped without oil. User must read and understand well, that stinks. I can't just read. I have to understand it. All right. So I'm going to see if I can pop this cap off, which I can. And I'm kind of curious to see if I can pop this dent out. It's damp inside there. It honestly feels oily more than anything else. They probably just oil it so it won't get too rusty. They're barely long enough and definitely not strong enough to pop that metal out. So we're going to leave that as is, and that's just going to be a feature. Is there already a little bit of oil in there? I hope not. Well, what I really hope is that nobody tried to start this and had an issue. <laughs> That's my number one concern, is that this is actually like a returned unit, but somebody's trying to sell me it as a new unit. Oh well, if that happens, uh, that happens. Hopefully that doesn't happen, or hopefully if it was a returned unit, it was because of the dented tank, in which case that's not a serious issue. And if someone made a little money off of it before it got to me, that's fine, as long as everything works well. I always appreciate honesty, if that was the case. I don't think the seller was honest, but there's no way to prove anything or to know. And honestly, all that matters is that this works, hopefully. It looks like there is no oil in here, which is good, so. That's dry. I think I just had some, there's just a little bit of residual shipping oil in there um, that sloshed around and got the dipstick wet. So I'm happy about that, that there's not actually oil in there. So let's go ahead and get this filled with oil, um, get some gas in here and um, get the hose and all that stuff put together and uh, let's see if we can get this thing started up. Well, that should be all of it. Looks like it's coming right up in there. It's getting pretty full because we're on the uphill side. So I went ahead and read more of the manual, and I think I may actually even understand it. But a couple things I'm going to point out. 
One is that the pump is actually shipped with oil. There is a plug on top here that you take out and put the breather on there. So that might account for some of this miscellaneous oil I see down here. Secondly, there is a sight glass on the side and the oil's supposed to be in that dot in the middle. And uh, it's actually a little high, but not too worried about that. I think we're good on oil on both sides. Learned a little more about the engine. We've got our fuel off then on, choke off then on. Oh, that looks like choke there. And um, we've got our throttle right here. So that'd be low throttle, high throttle, and our engine off on. And I filled up the tires with some air, got the hoses all pretty much hooked up. So really at this point, I only need to add water from a garden hose, make sure it comes all the way through the system. Then we can go ahead and see if we can fire this thing up. So we are really close to the moment of truth and I'm super excited. This is gonna be uh, fun. Very rarely do I get new equipment like this. So it's kind of fun. How many pulls do you think it'll take to start this brand new engine? Oh no, it didn't start. Fuel's on. Why are we not starting? I feel like it's possibly not getting fuel. I need a uh, wrench to open the float bowl and see if fuel's in there. They're getting gasoline all right. I think it's just stubborn to start. All right, so two things that might help here. One is a spark tester. We'll do that first, make sure we're getting spark. Second of all, some carb cleaner. We'll double check this real quick by putting a whiff of carb cleaner in here. That was the moment of truth. We know it runs. Just gotta get it, got to get it running and stay running. Um, fuel's definitely getting down into the uh, float bowl, but maybe it's just not working into the system somehow. Wow. Why is it harder to pull? So. Uh. What's going on here? That'd be disappointing if this thing has a bad engine, but all of a sudden it is getting really hard to pull. I feel like the compression release came off and it's not going back on. Flip side is, with the compression release off, if that is what's happening, which I'm hopeful that's all that's happened, with more compression it should start easier, it's just hard to pull it. Two things happened there. One, it started. The second, it got easier to pull, so the compression release was um, working again. And thirdly, it died again. So let's try to get started up again. It runs. That was a fair to get it started. I think it was just because it was a brand new engine. warm up for a bit like that. She bucks a lot there at full throttle. Okay, so it's been idling away here for a little bit. Let's uh, see if it throttles up better now and uh, maybe put a nozzle on and see if it sprays. Let's try the concrete and see what it does with a zero degree nozzle.
my first opinion on this thing is that it's hard to start. It runs a little rough and it's way more effective than any pressure washer I've had before because they were all cheap broken ones. This thing it will clean the concrete, which is nice. I look forward to using this pressure washer for cleaning mower parts and um, you know cleaning the driveway and just various things that I've never had a pressure washer that would really do very well. All right, so let's see if we can fix this surging at um, full throttle on this thing. I read a little bit online. It sounds like it's probably a um, clogged main jet, which could be from sitting. I don't know if there is a little residual fuel or what. This definitely has the appearance to me of being brand new, which goes along with what I was told. So I'm not sure how or why main jet would have gotten clogged, but um, I'm hopeful that I can just um, take off this bolt here. And the float bowl will drop off, and I can then um, clean out the jets from the underside. Not much more I can do than that. Let's go try this thing out again. the choke so much. That's too much fun. I need to find something to wash. Maybe the truck? been sitting in the shop for a few weeks now but I want to go ahead and wash the whole driveway so let's uh, see if this thing fires up a little bit better than it did the first time that would be fantastic and we'll see how long it takes to wash the driveway I'm kind of curious how long it'll take yeah let's go do it let's have fun I'm thinking last time my mistake might have been trying to choke it and that kind of stuff, so I'm not going to choke it at all. Okay, let's try choking it. We'll let that warm up for a little bit and uh, get a face shield, hearing protection. It should be fun. We've got a lot of driveway to wash here. What a huge difference. This has taken a long time though, and I think I just ran out of gas, so I'll need to get some more gas, and uh, I think washing the whole driveway is gonna take a long time. I tried out a couple of different tips on there. Um, so right now I'm using the uh, 15 degree tip. I think that works better than the uh, 25 degree, because uh, I can just back off the 15 degree, but if I need to get more pressure, I can just get a little closer. That's a little bit like trying to fill out your voter ballot box with a ballpoint pen. It takes forever. All right, so we are ready for day two of washing the driveway. Let's see how far we can make it before we need to call it quits today. It's kind of taking a bit of time, but I think I've already said that a few times. Very clear line there, the difference between clean 
not clean. It's uh, morning time now. I'm going to see if I can get some power washing squeezed in before I start work. And, uh, well, it's kind of cold. Not too cold. It's like 64 degrees. A little cold, cooler than I prefer for uh, getting soaked with pressure washing. So we'll see if we can be careful. But uh, this is what it's looking like. It's looking pretty good. I'd say we're right around halfway. I've got maybe an hour I can do this right now, so we'll see if I can get from here at least, you know, to the dirt line there. And then maybe a little bit on my lunch break, and then maybe a little bit later, because I am working from home. Let's get to it, and let's try not to um, get too wet. <laughs> Lunch break, let's get back at it. All right, we're done for right now again. I'm hoping I can finish it up next time, which will be uh, after work today. And uh, we can wrap all this stuff up, wrap up this video and get you guys an update on what I think of the pressure washer. Final push, let's get this thing done. That took a long time, but it's done. All right, so I have just put several hours of use on this PowerShot by Simpson pressure washer. And I gotta say, this thing has done really well. I've been really happy with it. It has a lot of power, pretty good flow rate, and the engine's been running pretty well. I have noticed a few times where I like have a slight hiccup, but I think that's a little bit normal for pressure washers. Um, it's actually been kind of clearing up a little bit. Earlier on, I had times when my pressure to my nozzle would stop suddenly. I could just die out and then come back, but that kind of stopped happening, so I think it may have just been breaking in a little bit. Yeah, I've been running it on the governor most of the time, wide open, full flow, and it's done a really good job. I'm pretty happy with it. I think this thing is going to serve me well. I think it was a great value getting this kind of a new unused, basically still in the box. And uh, if you guys are considering or thinking about possibly getting a pressure washer or specifically a Simpson power shot, well, I wouldn't really hesitate. But definitely if you can find a good deal like I did. The only issue being that the gas tank is slightly crushed in. I don't really have any complaints about this pressure washer. It did use quite a bit of fuel um, and I used quite a bit of time. So pressure washing still takes a while when you're doing something large like this. It's like, you know, trying to use a two inch putty knife to scrape off the entire side of your house. But um, I got the job done and the driveway looks really good. I know more about pressure washers. I have something I'm comfortable using in the future. I'm looking forward to using this on other projects around the house and in the business. I think that pretty much sums it up for now. New pressure washer at Garage Doy, way better than any previous used um, cheapo ones that I've had in the past, which were hardly any better than a garden hose. This is totally different. I'm happy I have it. And guys, uh, if you like this video, feel free to like it, subscribe, whatever. Leave a comment, ask a question. 
tell me I did everything wrong. I'm sure I've done several things wrong. That's just a part of life. As always, guys, stay safe, keep making stories, and we'll catch you on the next one.